All right. So today I'm gonna to be meeting with Jaden. He asked me for another private one-on-one -on -one mentoring meeting. I'm gonna push him hard today. <laughs> Let's see if we can make some magic happen. Half a million in income. I want to move faster. Like I know that I can move faster. And... You should have a map for when you're at and where you wanna go. I love mentoring with people. And one of my favorite things to do is help people multiply their income. I love showing them that if they can show up and do the right things or alter certain behaviors, that they can double their income, triple their income, quadruple their income. And I've got the joy of not just doing this for clients, but I actually get to do this for my own team. So today I'm gonna actually be sitting down with Jaden. I know he wants to triple his income, but I don't know if he's exactly prepared for where I'm gonna have to take him to make that happen. My name is Jaden. I'm one of Chris's team directors here with his company and with his real estate company as well. The first time that I started working for him, I was making about $30,000 a year. And now that I'm here, I want to talk about how to make a half a million. I'm a little bit excited. Obviously, this is a great goal to have, but Chris can be intense. Like he can get real deep with you and I don't know what's going to happen today, but I'm super excited about it. And I know that this is a good step for me to take that next level up and get where I want to go. So see how it turns out. Tell me about you. So, what do you want? I want to move faster. Like I know that I can move faster and my ultimate goal is this year, I want to make a half a million in income. Okay, so you want to reverse engineer, what would you have to do, what does that look like, and what do you have to change? Exactly. I love that you have that intention and how would I do it? Right. Right, like right. is this opportunity, what does it break? Is this a 100K opportunity? Is this a 300K opportunity? Could it be a 500K opportunity? We're gonna enter what I call the creation room. Okay. In the creation room, everything goes. Okay. It's a non-judgmental place where we reserve criticism and it's where we step away from our own limiting beliefs okay. and we get really agnostic about ideas. In this room, everything goes. Everything is okay. Everything is open. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. It also means that whatever goes on, it's kind of like Vegas. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. It's kind of like in the creation room, just because it's in the creation room doesn't mean it's intended for reality. Okay. It just means it's exploration at its finest. Okay. So I want to invite you and I to really step away from expectation as we understand it and then say, let's find out what's possible. Okay. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. All right. What I know I want to do is I'm going to create a, a financial map. Okay. And the financial map says how much money is possible. And then the other half is right here. This is a behavior map. Awesome. And the behavior map says what needs to change to make this map possible. And if we can create 500K here and find the behaviors here and get them to sync up, then you have a game plan for making that happen. This is gonna be fun, let's play. I'm stoked, I've been looking forward to this. All right, right now more or less every single week you're earning what in commissions? If I was to take an average, I would say 3,500. And percentage wise, you're at 20%. Right. But you're currently on tap for how much money this year would you guess? 150. What's 3,500 times 50 weeks? I'm getting 175. Yep, that's right. Okay? That's right. So we're going to say you need to find a way to nearly, basically triple. Yeah. You need to triple. Yeah. You want to figure out how to get to 10K a week. Yeah. You are earning 20% commissions. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's just actually see how things look as they stand. A 20% commission, we know that you need to basically do 2.5 million in sales if you want that to equal 500,000. Now you also have overrides in there. Right. We need to factor in the epoxy commissions. Mm -hmm. We need to factor in overrides. We need to factor in possibly raises. That would be like a sales floor manager, okay. which is big unknown. Like, do we get there? How many people do we need? What does that look like? Right. And then we need to factor in your regular commissions. Okay. Now, what I love about what we're doing right now is that if you have a financial goal, you should be able to map out and create reasonable assumptions. And that's what I'm going to do here. Did you know that you can influence the number of leads you get and to get them excited to want to get it? Right now, if you were to grade yourself on a scale of one out of 10, 10 being, I'm amazing at hiring. A scale of one out of 10, where are you at skill based here? Two. This is good, by the way. This is how you make this number possible from where you're at. This is a really low score, and this is a really low score. Okay. It doesn't mean you're bad wrong. It's just information. It needs 
double your team who would double your overage. So over here, our goal is we need to shift from this to 2,000 a week. That means that you're earning, of your half a million, you're earning $100,000 a year just in override. Does that make sense? Right. Okay. So if we're 4,000 here and we're an extra thousand here, then let's talk about your commissions. If you had twice the team, would you have twice the closings? And of the 2,400, is it fair to say that that number would double or you still have your personal production? What do you think this number would go to? What would your six week average be if you had a full team of six functional, really amazing, transformative coaches? They would double. So this would be 4,800? Yeah. Okay, so let's just look at what this first step up would be in the most ideal sense. By the way, for this to happen, this all feeds really into this, but then it also has to do with training. On a scale of one out of 10, how would you reflect on yourself as a work trainer? Five. How do you think your team would reflect on you as a trainer? Eight. Okay. And why do you say five and they say eight? Because they don't know what I'm capable of. Awesome. Good. These numbers right here, when we get to this side of the equation, are ultimately going to be the key to actually getting everything figured out over here. That makes sense? Yes. Let's see what our delta looks like so far. Uh, plug your calculator. Actually, we already know the math, right? Let's add it up. 4,000 plus 2,000 plus 4,800 is essentially $9,800 a week. And $9,800 a week times 50 weeks is? It is 500K. Right. You got two extra weeks in the year. So first of all, I wanted to do this and just say, <laughs> is this even possible? Yeah. And what's the answer? It's very possible. Good. So now we have to fix the behavior. Okay. Right? In other words, I, I did not know if we would get to this number or not. Yeah. And I'm looking at these three things and I'm saying, and by the way, if you were crushing it, do you think it's possible that you could get a promotion? 100%. And with the promotion make you more money? 100%. So is it possible to make more money than this? 100%. Yes. I will tell you this. Parts of this you can control, parts of this you can't. Right. You can control way more things than you think. Right. But here's what you need to know. We are not going to be getting a floor manager until we are consistently hitting 250,000 a week okay. in that specific department. Right. And right now it teeters between, it, it averages about 60 or 70. Right. Right. So it literally needs to 4X. Right. But let me just ask, how much total volume is your team average in a week? 30,000. Okay, so 30. So if you double things, that goes to 60. Right. If you add in two fully paid epoxies, then 60 becomes 60 and 80 is? 140. Is 140. Your team is now representing more than half of what's required. Which is what I want to keep doing. If you do this, is it reasonable to hope that you could help the other team leaders do the same? Yes. If all team leaders were doing this, if your team, if 140K was JD, and let's just say Nick's team became 100, and let's just say Mary Ann's team gave you 100, then we'd be sitting at 340K. So if you hit your goals and they're hitting a portion of that goals, then we're going to be hitting this and then we're going to want a floor manager. We have a floor manager, there's going to be more override and there's probably going to be more money. How much more money? It's not important. You can get to your 500K goal without it, but it means there's more to look at. Up. Keep your eye on what you can control the most. Okay. What I want to do is I want to talk about one, two, three, four, five skills. Okay. And then I want to see if there's anything else that is missing here. Okay. Make sense? First of all, in your life, can you do this? You should have a map for where you're at and where you want to go. For Jaden, it's I'm making $175,000 this year. When you came to us like just a little over a year ago, yeah. how much were you making a year? If I included extra under the table stuff, about $30,000. So he's making $30,000 a year, works here for a year, by the way, embraces the culture, actually applies all the mindset development, is applying all the financial techniques, and literally gets themselves from a 30K to 175K. That is, that's huge. Yes. You already more than tripled your income. Yeah. You like quitting something numbered. Now you're asking, how do I triple it? Yes. Make sense? First of all, you should know where you're at to know where you want to go. You should also ask yourself, and I'm going to ask you these questions. You know what business you're in. I want to ask, are you in the right business? Yes. And on a scale of one out of 10, how convicted are you by that? Nine. Where's the missing one? This. Okay. I don't know if I can get to where I financially want to go here. So I'm going to teach you the first thing and I want you guys to hear this. How I make this possible is I develop, Jaden, an unconquerable unquenchable 
undeniable belief, an indomitable belief that I've already achieved this. So one of the beliefs, and I know you're doing your mind palace, but this is like the, what are my walkaways from this meeting? This is my to-do list. And number one, in your mind palace, you need to live at a 500K income level. By the way, if you were making half a million, how would you feel? Amazing. And define amazing, what kind of emotions? I would be ecstatic to wake up every day, I would have energy every moment, I would be investing into real estate. You'd be investing more, what else would change? Whatever lifestyle changes would change? I would have a primary residence. Okay. I would have a new and nice car. Okay. I would be able to travel more okay. and enjoy my time more. That's what you need to do in your mind palace. Okay. You need to pretend that you're already making a half and without changing your financial status, you need to mentally change your status. You've got to actually learn how to like mentally get fully in the game present as if you've already achieved your goal and in your mind, spend your money in your mind, feel the joy in your mind, do the things in the mind, go travel those places, go to one of those VR companies and pay some money and go see China. Like get convince your mind consciously to put your subconscious mind that I'm already there. That's the first step is you've got to develop this absolute certainty that it's already happened. Right. That's how you get from a nine to a 10. What that does is it builds faith. I need to talk about training. I want to work from the bottom up. Why are you training at a five out of 10? And why aren't you training like a half a million dollar a year producer? I'm training at a five out of 10 because I don't prepare my trainings. And I mirror the state of who I'm training instead of creating the state for who I'm training. So whatever state they're in that day, that's the state I go into instead of setting the state and saying... And that's super unconscious and super reactionary. Right. What it does is it means that you're at their level, mm -hmm. but for you to lead, do you think people want to be led by someone at their level? No. No. By the way, do you have the results that you're beyond their level? Yes. Yeah. So lead from that standpoint. Guys, I was at 30K a year, now I make 175K a year. I wanna to get to half a million dollars a year. And the only way that I can do that is by helping all of you like make total awesome rocking six figures. Right. Will you let me help you? Yeah. That's bringing other people into your energy sphere by the spirit of invitation. Okay, so here's what you need to change. You need to actually start wetting your trainings. I need to bring the state and actually lead them. You need to prepare. Yeah. And that preparation is a part of leading. So I'm just gonna put that all under prepare. Okay. So you're not gonna just step into trainings anymore, you're going to prepare intentional trainings. Right. Okay? By the way, to get your trainings to a 10 out of 10, what else needs to happen? I need training. I need to know the best practices and implement those practices, so I need training. And where do you get that training from? For you. And are we doing that right now? Yes. And in the last two weeks have we started doing it? Yes. Okay, so to make it regular, who's responsible for that? I am. Okay, so you need to train with Chris. Now I want you guys to understand what that means. That's called proximity. You have to put yourself in the airspace of people who have already superseded what you want tenfold. In other words, he's trying to make a half a million dollars a year. So he needs to be mentoring with someone that is making millions of dollars a year. Does that make sense? If you miss that component, then you'll never have anyone to emulate. You'll never have anyone to copy. I call it R&D. You think it means research and development. It actually means rip off and duplicate. And I'm trying to find the most successful people and with their permission, help and training, I'm ripping them off. I'm emulating them. I'm copying them so that I can actually learn how to do what they're doing. So you need to get better training and then you need to deliver better trainings. Right. And you need an absolute certainty. Right. Good. That takes care of training. Hiring and firing, it's a two out of 10. Why? What needs to change? I don't make it a priority. It's not in my plans. It's not in my goals. I want you to imagine right now that you have four team members that have a 6,500 six week average. And you have two people, a third of your team, that is at a nothing. Why is this person here? How long have they been here? They've been here probably three months now. Three months. What is the highest six week average they ever had? Why are you allowing that, honestly? Honestly, 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 last week I told them that do not come in Monday morning unless you have three, four sales and 4,000 in volume when it came in Monday morning due to my assistant team lead saying that was okay. So I need to have that conversation. When? Um, Monday morning. Whose leads are these? Whose leads? Yes. Whose leads are these? Yours. And who else are they? Mine. You, do, you need to understand something. Right now by having him here, who's being dishonored? I am. And? You. Exactly. My leader is dishonoring me right. because you have been given command over the soldiers right. and you're allowing your soldiers to misbehave. Right. Now I want to help you understand something. What's another reason why you're not letting go? Because it brings in something better than nothing. Yeah, because you have a belief that something is better than nothing. Right. 
But can I actually tell you the opposite is true? See, if you eliminated this person, your other two members of the team would perform better. Do you know why? They're not, not, well, one, they would have more leads. Oh my gosh. Do you, by the way, are they working in a way that it would be better to give them more leads? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. And, how, and if they're producing 10 times the results, this one 10, this one 11. Right. If they're producing 10 times the results, why would you not give them the leads? So here's what you need to change. Leads equal opportunity and they equal money and you give to the best. Right. And if you don't have the best on your team, they don't get leads. So there's one way that they're being hurt. One way they're being hurt is because they're not being given the opportunity because you're giving it to someone three months later and you don't believe it. By the way, do you believe that person's gonna figure it out? No. If they haven't figured it out in three months, are they gonna figure it out next month? No. No, why are they still here? Because I allowed someone else to be a leader when I'm the leader. Okay, and I wanna ask one other question. I wanna go one step deeper. We're still missing something. Why is that person here three months later? Why aren't you firing them? What is in your nature that doesn't wanna do that? Yes, something is better than nothing. I'm a people pleaser. Is that what it is? Is that because you're scared of firing? Don't want to hurt him. Because you don't want to hurt him. Right. Meanwhile, who's hurting? Me. One, you're hurting. Two, Karina's hurting. Three, Max is hurting. Four, Chris is hurting. By the way, do you like Karina? Yes. Do you like Max? Yes. And do you like me? Yes. And do you like you? Yes. And yet you're throwing all four under the bus? For one person. For one person. Is this smart leadership? No. Maybe in some places, maybe in some organizations, yeah. but in this type of line of work that is all results oriented, why are you tolerating someone that is incapable of producing the result? You're telling your team that what Jeff is doing is okay. Yeah. That is what you're saying. Yeah. And by the way, why would I fire him today? Grab those leads and give them to the people that can do something with them. Right. Jeff represents a third of the leads they're getting. You disseminate that third of the leads, and that means that they each could split the difference on the two thirds, and each literally do a third better. That might be what gets Kareem and Max at 10,000 a week. Right. Your overrides would go up. True. Yeah, they would. Your sets would go up. Yes. You'd make more money. Yes. They'd make more money. Yes. The right people would make more money. Right. Does this make sense? Yes. So what needs to happen in your hiring and firing? I need to have a goal, first of all. Like, I need to track it because I don't track how much time or like there's no KPI. You tell me right now, give me this KPI, go to your gut. How many weeks do you get to give someone before they're out? Three. Is it three? It's three. It was six, but now it's three. It's three weeks, that's what's changed. By the way, how overdue is he? Two and a half months. Yeah. So by the way, what do you need to do today? Fire. Yeah, so three weeks to basically keep or fire. By the way, you're doing them a favor when you fire them, why? You're telling them this is not for you. I know you want this to be for you. Guys, we have the most addictive culture. We have something here, by the way, everyone wants. People everywhere on YouTube tracks us down. Dude, that's how we met. And people are like, dude, I love you, Chris. I want to be around you. I get it. Dude, this environment is amazing. The company is amazing. The people here are amazing. Everything's amazing. No one wants to go. But what you're doing is you have such a low standard. The only way you're going to triple your income is by helping more people be successful and you have to change your definition of success. Right. So now I want you to get specific. Karina, her first three weeks here, what did she show you? She showed me $6,000 in volume. She showed you $6,000 in volume every single week. She's only been here how long? She's been here. This is her fourth week. This is her fourth week. Right. right? That's your standard. Max, how long did it take for him to pop? Five weeks. It took five weeks? But he showed promise at three weeks. He showed promise at three weeks? Right. By the way, if you have someone on your team that has been here three weeks and hasn't posted a sale, is that a problem? Yes. It means that after all of your training that now moves to a 10 out of 10, right. with your absolute certainty, like you're hurting everyone by keeping this person. Right. And so firing them is basically saying, this is not for you. You need to go find something that is. I care about you that much. By the way, that person brings down energy. They bring down morale. They're the elephant in the room that everyone's uncomfortable around. Right. Everyone's hopeful, but you're developing a culture that says, we take on, we take on projects and we're here to train. Right. We're not here to train. I want you to put something else here in your head. This is number six. This is not paid training. You are not learning on your dime. Right. You take someone from zero like, hey, you're a nobody. I'll help you become somebody. You hire proven talent. If they don't have a track record, should you be hiring them? No. You should not be hiring them. But by the way, if intuition said give this person a shot, how long would they get? Three weeks. And by the way, does that mean that they get three weeks? 
If you see on day two that they're not showing up, they're late, and they're not calling, are you going to say, well, they have three weeks to figure it out? No, it's not exactly. Tony Shea says, hire slow, fire fast. Right. So by the way, on day two, if someone is not the right stuff and you ask them about it and they're like not getting it, what do you do? Fire. Yeah, it's just like, dude, this isn't for you. The faster you fire, the faster you build a winning dream team. You can take six months to do it or you can take three months to do it. Right. You can take a year to do it. Right now, this two out of 10 says I've got two years. Right. You bring that to a 10 out of 10 and you're saying I've got three months. Okay. Which would you prefer? Three months. Okay. If this year you want to make a half a million, you're not on track. Yeah. In the next 12 months, you could get on track, but you're going to have to make changes when? Now. Yeah. And one of those changes is I got to let go of the wrong people. Right. That makes sense? Right. All right. So from here, let's move to hire fire. We've talked about firing, now let's talk about hiring. Do you influence the people that you can hire? Yes. Do you influence people in this company that get resumes? Yes. Are you seeing those resumes every day? Yes. You are? I am. So this is a good thing. Yes. Have you researched two or three or four other resources to get additional resumes? I have not. No, so one of the things I would add on here is get more leads. By the way, more leads always means more money. Right. So by the way, that's true of hiring too. If you're like, hey guys, I can only hire one person of the week because you're getting 10 apps a week and I only like one of them, but then I have to fight for the other team leaders that also want them, right. then you need more what? Leads. So I'm gonna challenge you. If you wanna grow your team faster, get three times the leads. How do you do that? You're gonna to have to open up additional ways that the company receives applications, okay. right? right? I know you posted something on social media, but Indeed is just a way for us to collect more, but there's other ways out there to headhunt and find people that would be really good for this. Right. So by the way, if you're not rebuilding your team fast enough, then get more leads. Okay. Make sense? Yes. By the way, I would rather give my leads on a bet than a proven. Yes. This person is proven after three months to average 600, a tenth of what everyone else is. Mm -hmm. So you know exactly what they're capable of, true or false. Sure. And I'm telling you right now, if you work with this person for two or three more months, you might be able to get their 600 yeah. to 1200 right maybe two grand yeah how far below average is it it's one sixth of what I yes have. right yeah and i'm paying minimum wage on that don't hurt right. my pocket but right. don't punish me right 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 get it yeah, yeah. okay so um i want you to get more leads for hiring and by the way cool thing about this doesn't take a lot of time okay it takes very little time to open up that pot okay deal deal okay number eight let's talk about lead quantity and lead quality do you have influence over the leads? Not that I knew of. Do you have a relationship with operations and marketing to sit down and say, hey, tell me how about how are the leads going? Hey, I heard that we were gonna do this thing. As like, hey, and, and let me tell you how you get more leads. You show them how you manage your leads. Right. And when they're confident in your management of the leads, guess what they want to allocate? More leads. More to who? They want to put leads where they have confidence, just like you're doing with your team. Right. So what I would do is I would build uh, a relationship, and I'm not talking about nepotism. That relationship is based on accountability. Accountability means every week drop a report that says, hey, you guys gave me this and this is what we produced. On these lead types, we did this. Right. They check their math and like, wow, this guy cares. You say, by the way, Max is really good with this lead type. Can I get more of those and trade some of the others? Dude, now you're playing a game of like, here are my resources. I'll trade this for that. Did you ever trade candy in Halloween? Yeah. Did you guys ever trade candy in Halloween? You're like, you took the candy you didn't like, you got in a circle with your buddies, friends, siblings, and you're like, hey, I'll trade you one of these for one of those. Or, yeah. Right? Because everyone wants to get what they want. Yeah. Guess what you need to do? You need trade. to get in the game of trading. And you know what? I'm telling you, that department has no interest in having a relationship with you to do that. Right. But if you build a relationship and then show them week after week after week, it might be six weeks, it might be two weeks, it might be two months, but eventually they're going to say, Jaden keeps showing me that he gets this game mm -hmm. and then he's making asks that are intelligent backed by numbers. Right. And I want to tell you something as a business owner. When you can make intelligent asks, intelligent trades based on data versus feelings, people say Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. Jay, if you want to triple your income, last year you went from 30,000 to 175,000. If you want to now go into making a half a million dollars a year, then my invitation for you is to do these eight things. Measure them, let me hold you accountable. Every week send me a text and let me know what is changing with you on those eight things. And here's my last invitation. 
don't make an incremental change. Yeah. Make a dramatic change. In other words, ask yourself, what is the most responsible, dramatic action I can take today? And you don't go to bed until you've taken that action. You see, it's not about letting go of someone. It's about redistributing the resources and then thanking them and then wishing them the best of luck in their life. Right. Every day you delay something on this list you could do, you're basically delaying this as a possibility. What do you call it in politics when it's not a democracy and you're trying to make everything equal? What's that called? That's called communism. Right. By the way, are, are we communists? No. We are not. No. We are not seeking to be fair. Yeah. We are seeking to distribute opportunity to the people who want the opportunity. No one deserves the opportunity except for people that want it. And by the way, some of you are gonna absolutely hate me on this video for having said that, but I want you to understand that in life, squeaky wheel gets the grease, you give the opportunity to the people who want it. This is not socialism. Right. And so right now, I need you to move from socialism to democracy. Okay. Capitalism, meaning if you earn it, you get it. Right. Hey, I have these extra leads. I'm gonna give them to the first sale of the day. The, I wanna see hustle. I wanna see dials. I wanna see appointments. And I'm going to reallocate according to that. Anytime you're less than seven, you should be panicking, saying, ah, I gotta do something to fix this. Not, well, you know, I'm gonna walk to the park for a few Sundays, I'll meditate, 90 days maybe. Well, no, yeah. none of that goes. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so does that create pressure? Yes. But for the little bit of time, is it reasonable? Yes. Yeah, it's an hour a week. Is it reasonable? Yes. Good, that's part of your, what you put in your mind palace. Every week I find a new person that is perfect for my team. By the way, could you say, Chris, I want you to make a video on YouTube. Maybe this is the video where people are like, oh, are you really making that kind of money and changing the world and helping people? Like, can we, Chris, can you drop something in the link so that we actually get people that might live anywhere in the world that might be willing to relocate to freaking change lives and crush it that love this channel? Dude, there's so many ways. When you apply yourself, that's when inspiration opens up and things happen. I want you to track your progress on a week by week. I want you to let me know if you're finding that one amazing person a week. I want to know by the end of the day whether you made the appropriate choices there. Did you hurry and reallocate the leads the way that we talked about? Did you figure out when your ex training is and did you set aside 30 minutes? Did you go into my palace? All of these things you can check off on a list. Right. Will you do these things? Yes. Good. If you do these things, should they move you in this direction? Yes. It could take you two years, it could take you six months, it could take you three months to get on track for earning this kind of money because you have to change before these things can start happening. We didn't even talk about events. No. Wow. Last thing, Chris, is this was a big question I had coming to this meeting is because I knew I was going to get these things and these action items and I am committed to it right now. But what I've noticed with my old behavior is that that commitment dies over time. I want to know what do you do to recommit yourself and to fuel that fire All right. every day. All right, I want you guys to hear this. I don't set goals unless I am hyper serious about them. It is such a bad mistake to like set an intention and then over time develop an integrity so low that you're not gonna actually keep up with it. It's right. damaging. Because right. it means you can start things but you don't finish things or that you don't stick long term. Right. I only want to know exactly what I'm going after, how long is it gonna take me to do that. In my personal experience of me, if I could do these things for 30 days, then they become a part of my regular SOP. So let me ask you, when you usually commit to something, when does it usually wane? When do, at what point from the point that you start does it start like losing momentum? Day three. Day three. So I'm gonna tell you that you need to stick with this for 30 days and you need to put something on the line. We're either motivated by what we want or we're motivated by pain. Mm -hmm. If you're letting go, then that means that the benefit is not strong enough to keep you in the game. Right. When the benefit is not strong enough to keep you in the game, when making a half a million is not strong enough to keep you in the game, then you know what I leverage? Consequence. Pain. Right. I leverage fear, I leverage punishment, I leverage consequences. Not to create a negativity to bring me down, right. but literally, sometimes I'm motivated by love, but the reality is sometimes I'm also motivated by fear and both are appropriate. Right. I got tax season coming up. I have to write a big seven figure check. Right. I'm not excited about it. I'm a little behind on how much money I've set aside for the government. So guess what I gotta do? Like I have a deadline and I gotta get that there and I don't wanna owe the government money. Right. So guess what? That's pain. For you, let me ask you. I'm gonna put you totally into a relationship with me for 30 days. We're gonna develop a KPI on each one of these so that every day you can know if you did them. We're gonna do it right now and then we're gonna come up with a punishment. Okay. Like nasty, okay. like so nasty you would never want to. Okay. Deal? Deal. 
Okay, number one, Mind Palace, KPI. This is literally about checking off a box that you did it. And I want you to set a timer, and I want you to spend as much time as you want on it, but every day I want a five minute minimum. Okay. You set the timer, you go in your Mind Palace, and you go as long as you want. But if you come out of that, and there's still time on the clock, you go back in. Okay. Deal? Deal. Okay, number two, preparing training. I want you, four times a week, to be able to show me the proof of the prep. How I want you to do that to me is I want you to give me five bullets for each training before you deliver it. Okay. It's gotta be five bullets before, and we're gonna consider that preparation. Okay. Five bullets means you really had to think about it. Right. And by the way, I'm gonna critique your bullets, and if your bullets suck, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna say this, pre this, this, this preparation is not adequate. Right. And that's part of the accountability. Okay. Deal? So this one is only four times a week. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. Daily is easier than not daily. Mm -hmm. So you gotta keep an eye on that one. Okay, training with Chris. Um, in fact, I wanna hit the ones, I know that I'm gonna be accountable on this one. I don't wanna give you eight things. I wanna do the things that matter most. Okay. I wanna stick with the three weeks before I fire you in the next 30 days. Okay. And that starts with an action today. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Right here on hiring. I want you, um, how many resumes are you looking at a week? Okay, I want you, if we wanted to 3X that, then I need you to find a way to look at how many. Nine. So once a week, to check this box off, you have to review nine actual resumes, and you have to know that how we're generating them is not enough. Yeah. Which means you gotta hustle and get your butt out the door to create your own. Yeah. You can use the company money to set up accounts, you can use the, the company's job posting on Indeed, copy and paste, but Put it in your own hands. You go set up the accounts. Tell the company you're doing it on their behalf. Set up the account, post it, and then start getting from Craigslist and, and, and all the ads, all of these things. Okay. Will you do that? Yes. Awesome. Anything that you're not looking at, I want you to give to the rest of the company. Okay. It's a deal? Deal. Okay. Building a relationship with accountability. On this one, I, every week, I want to see the report. What day am I going to see that report on? When, when will you have it generated by no matter what? I can have it done Monday morning. Okay. So 9 a.m. meeting. Okay, so I wanna see it Monday by noon in my inbox or you fail. Nine resumes, I want you to literally send me a picture of all nine resumes and I want you to send these by Saturday midnight and that represents your resumes for the week. Okay. So if by Saturday I did not have nine resumes, if I don't have those then it's like whatever the punishment is you get it. Right. If by Monday noon I don't get your report for one of the Mondays during these three days, you're out. That makes sense? Right. Five bullets on your four trainings a week. On four days of, of the seven days of a week, I need to see these five bullets. I don't care if it is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't care if it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. But on Monday through Saturday, I need on four separate days to be given five bullets on what you've prepped for your team training. Right. Make sense? Yes. And then lastly, Mind Palace, every day, five minutes. That's your daily, this is your four times a week, this is your once a week, this is your once a week. These are the four things. Now, what are you willing to put on the line that would hurt, but you would do? Just being accountable hurts right now. Nope. We're not used to it. I need a consequence. Dying my hair. What color? Um, my choice? Yeah, your choice because I have a lot of pictures happening over the next three months for wedding. Because you're getting married. So I can do whatever I want with your hair. I can style it, mohawk it, color it, multicolor, anything that I want. Yeah. Pick it? Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever, uh, I've never gone bald, bald, but I've, most, most men should, when you actually look at it, you're like, oh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. So your hair is mine. Okay. In any way that I want. Okay. Is that a bad enough punishment? I'm so scared. <laughs> By the way, you also my fiance is scared of that. By the way, I'm taking the eyebrows off. Okay. So all hair from the neck up is mine. I'm gonna look like Voldemort. Every every piece of hair from the neck up is mine. Okay. And it's mine for 30 days. Oh my God. Chris owns my hair for 30 days. Anything he wants to do for all 30 days. And by the way, I get to post them on your social media, any pictures that I want. Okay. Sucks. Would that suck? That would suck. Would that motivate you? It's scaring me. Yeah, good. Is there any of these things that you won't do? No. Well, well no, no, you better decide right now because we're about to shake on it. We're gonna do a Corona shake, which is an elbow touch. If we shake on this, 
this is law starting today. And here's what the expectation is. Today is what day of the week? Today is Wednesday. Yeah, it's today is Wednesday. And so I'm telling you right now, because it's a half week, I want to see half of all of these goals. So I want to see half the trainings. I want to see mind palaces for the rest of the week. I want to see five resumes and I want to see uh, your report on Monday morning. With my mind palace, that's daily. That's daily. Okay. So here's what that looks like. It means this is a half week and then we are going to go for the next four full straight weeks, okay. which means that this ends because we're going to make this permanent. This ends on April 20th. Today is the 18th. 32 days. You good? Yeah. Are you willing? Yeah. You ready to commit? I can commit. If you miss one day of non-communication, you're out. Okay. Even if you did it. Okay. Because if I don't know that you did it. Yeah. Deal? Deal. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guess what? Watch this man. I bet we do a video six months from now and he's on track for making a half a million dollars. Get this in your life. All right, guys, that was rough. I'm not gonna lie, I'm freaking nervous and excited all at the same time. This is actually the second time that I've done this type of process with Chris. I met him about two years ago at his UFD event and I actually had an opportunity to work with Marianne, talk to her a little bit about how this process works and I set a goal for actually doing breakthrough. So we said 30 days of breakthrough, that's all that I needed to accomplish. And my consequence was I had to dye my hair pink and wear high heels on a college, local college campus. And I was not gonna do that. So over 30 days, what I noticed is I was super motivated to actually get my goal, but the consequence and the fear of not doing it was just as bad. And it made so that I 100% got that goal. So now that we've done it a second time, I'm super confident that it's gonna happen. I'm scared, I'm nervous, but it's what you gotta do if you wanna see success, so I'm stoked. Do I believe that Jaden will follow through on everything we just outlined? Yeah, 100%. In fact, I'm positive that he's gonna do it. I'm positive he's gonna crush it because I've learned that you need your goals to be specific. They need to be measurable. You need accountability, and then you need that punishment com component, and he's got all of those. And anytime I work with someone that has all of those, they crush it like every single time. Hey, thank you for watching today's video. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and do that, make that happen. And I wanna invite you to come out to one of my next events. My events are when I get a chance to get live with you. And literally, you might know me for my success in business or real estate, but it's what's in here that is most important. And just like Jaden is actually getting that one-on-one -on -one time with me, I, the closest thing I can do is to get in that airspace with you at one of my next upcoming events. So click the link below, register for one of our events later this year. Let's get together. Let me give you that private mentorship and do the thing that will double, triple, and quadruple your income.